you were in the middle of telling me a story as I was beginning to tell you, hey, they're going to turn the microphones on in a second, and you were blissfully unaware. So yeah. go ahead and tell the story now. The story I was scared to hear because I was like, hey, Stugatz, we're about to be on the air, and some of, your, some of yeah. your stories are not appropriate for air. Uh, I do that to you a lot. I apologize. Uh, I have no idea what's going on here when we're, the mics are on, when they're off. But anyway. Yes, we're on right now. Just yes. you and me, though. The mic, the, it's, look. Stugatz, I miss this part of what we do so much. The part huh, where we're just alone talking time? to the audience. Uh, you and me, yes. Uh, alone yes, yeah. alone time, intimate time. I miss you too. You and me, that's right, with no cameras around <laughs> and with us enjoying each other's company. How like are you? like we know nobody's cameras around. Baby. But they've put cameras in here <laughs> and more and more fucking cameras in here. <laughs> and so I want the audience to get a look right now of what the story was that you were about to tell when we were telling you, Stugatz, the microphone are on be careful i'm outside in the uh, parking garage doing what i do before the show which Smoking is having a heater a cigarette, yes yeah. and uh someone's trying to get in their spot and they stop abruptly and someone's behind them and they're complaining to me that they didn't use a signal and i'm saying like what do you want me to do and i'm trying to wave them past and they're trying to tell you to go past and they i'm telling you dan they thought i was a parking attendant and i wasn't i was just enjoying a cigarette you've got a bit of the frump and the dress of a parking attendant. You're actually, I think... You're, I'm good at it. I was, I, I was doing this. Yes. You're, I was you're, doing this. <laughs> okay, now we could use the cameras. The cameras aren't on yet. Finally, some people are in the building who can talk college basketball, huh. women's college basketball. What do you mean? Juju and Lucy are here. Lucy is in despair. Juju, you've seen this. Lucy is hurting. She is in so much pain because of what happened to Caitlin Clark because... No, not just Caitlin. Kate, Gabby, the whole squad. Molly Davis... Put some respect on their names, Dan. She's broken. Stokey and them girls. Oh, Hannah, I love her. <laughs> Lucy, you're our Iowa correspondent, and we are three days late. Despondent. Our, our <laughs> Iowa despondent. You are our Iowa despondent, and we are three days late to you giving us the kind of emotion around here that we did not have. We had plenty of analysis. All of a sudden, everybody around here is an expert on how Kim Mulkey does her job. Everybody can give her all sorts of coaching strategies. But what we didn't have around here was a genuine emotional link to not, hey, look, man, those 19 million people, a lot of them are casuals. Like, they just got, they don't care about the story, the pioneering. They're just here. Oh, look, it's the eclipse again. Let me put on my glasses. I want to be near the thing that gets four million more people than the men do. But Lucy's broken. Like, her heart was in that thing. She cared in a way that is only a thousand times deeper than anyone around here. Yep. What are you laughing about? I'm laughing at Tony because uh, he said in my headset, as you were talking about the eclipse, uh, about the glasses and what a fraud those glasses are. Give me are. a break, the glasses, please. My dog looks straight into the eclipse. She's completely fine, of course. See, this is what happens. We start talking women's sports, and all, all of a sudden we're on the damn eclipse. No, you were right, Dan. This is amazing. A tear came to my eye when I saw all the support these ladies was getting online. I don't care if it's good, bad. Brother, we have reached a point to where you, 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 Stu Goss was arguing yesterday on uh, Bri uh, with Brianna Stewart, I think, yeah. was at the hell. Yeah. Oh, my God. He didn't know what the hell he 
was talking about no it. No idea. I was like, look yeah. at him. We've made it. Yeah, but I was talking about it, Juju. You're right. Thank you for it, noticing. That Stugatz, yeah. This is excellent. Stugatz is saying we have not reached true equality in this country until Stugatz is faking it on your sport. <laughs> Zagak. How did, how did Check we, it out of box score. How did we miss that achievement? And, Lucy, in keeping with your general work for Metal Lark, which is very casual, passionate but casual, how are you three days late to reporting on your heartbreak around here? And how dare you ask us for more time off to take care of your mental health? Because Iowa lost. One, I don't know what that means. Yeah, what that mean? That's What does the casual part mean? I don't get that. Like, Boo. she does yeah. her job casually, like in a good way or yeah. a bad way? She's yeah, lazy answer the or... question. What does that mean? Mm. Uh, the answer is that Lucy gets to be here less frequently than everybody else working with us on the daily cooking of the meth that is going to kill us all while she's going to all the best sporting <laughs> events in America on Metal Arts Dime and buying a bunch of memorabilia for her and her loved ones. I didn't buy anything this trip. Yeah. So back off, Dan. I'm going through a lot. <laughs> Tell us what happened because I've got a workplace complaint from Rose on you. Because she says that you made her pray during the Iowa game when she didn't necessarily want to pray. Hmm. Didn't work, so. Didn't work. Yeah, right. whose fault is that? Thanks, God. <laughs> I don't like where we're going. Let's this is a bad, Lord, this is a bad yeah. idea. We cannot blame the Lord. Bad idea. <laughs> Everybody can pray, Lord. by the way. It's not just an exclusive But you thing. can't force somebody in the workplace to pray, can you? I don't think you can. You're the private boss company. I now. asked, and she said yes. And she told me that she prayed during the UConn game, and I didn't ask her to pray during that one. Hmm. I mean, we're making kids pray in public school now, so it's all really lost, you know? <laughs> I'm glad this conversation went here, really. Yeah, this, good first few years. Every about time the we eclipse? start talking so about women's so sports. Back to the glasses. Back to the glasses. Right. Yeah. 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 It's a scam, by the way. We start talking about women's sports. Now we on prayer. We on everything. But the actual sport, brother, Don Staley has cemented herself in legendary status. <laughs> Caitlin Clark, thank you for your support and, and, and love for the game. Oh, my God. It was so beautiful to see her out there like that, brother. And them girls from South Carolina. Oh, my God. Camilla Cardo. A round of applause from the top to the bottom of the squad for South Carolina. Yeah. The bench. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Undefeated and overlooked somehow. Overlooked somehow. <laughs> it's crazy, right? It is. No, he's right. Imagine that happening. Imagine, Stugatz, a phenomenon getting here so strong that what we were celebrating at the end was a cult of personality that brought so many new casuals to the sport that ignores, hey, a team just went undefeated out there. <laughs> and she lost. They beat the greatest player ever at the end. That's a pretty cool story. Why is it getting engulfed by the loser? Well, at least we watched them and looked at them. We didn't even look at UConn. They won back-to-back -back titles in men's. Right. So yeah. we didn't even look. At no least they weren't overlooked. Right. I looked. I cared. Come on, guys. Hey, yeah. start, Real though. Hoopers look. I'm not, like, I've been ashamed <laughs> listening to y'all the last couple of days. Y'all act like too late to watch nah. the championship game. Nah. Like, what has happened to my heroes? I will tell you this, Juju. For the first time, for the first time ever, for me at least, I felt like Monday night I had already seen the national championship game that I wanted to see. For the first time ever. And I had little to no interest in UConn and Purdue. Juju is right about everything. About every single thing that he said. Moving forward or just, uh, just, just uh, well, I'm willing to, I'm minutes. willing to negotiate on that. But when it comes to caretaking for the show, I, I'm here for Juju being just general ombudsman or when you guys ombudsman's an ombudsman. Mm. I know one. what ombudsmen yeah. mean, but I don't think Tony know what it means. So can you just it's help it's my when boy out? you got the buds and you need ombuds to keep them in line. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. I love nice. buds. You know? I would. I'm here for a segment where Juju just critiques where it is the show has been shitty the last couple of days, and I do believe that Lu uh, that Lucy and Juju care more about this than anyone in the room and that Juju correctly identifies when it is that Tony's got nothing and just wants to go to the eclipse because it's more fun to talk about It's not about, about nothing. Eclipse. I was I was locked in, Dan. It's right. just you said about the eclipse and you said about the glasses. It's a scam, by the way. Right. And my boy never got nothing. My boy, I don't care what he's talking about. He got something. Thank don't you. Know, don't do that. The vision is terrible in this building. That's my brother. I love him. Thank Tony you. is right about these glasses, though. There is one company that makes them. They have a monopoly. They made so much money on these things. I'm not even certain if you needed them. It's ridiculous. It's you absurd. Put, you put Four sunglasses is in a row, and then you can look straight up at it without a problem. Huh. Put us in the building, Lucy. 
fourth quarter with all the marbles Can on the line. Can we talk about the first quarter? I loved that quarter. That quarter, quarter. quarter was my quarter favorite. Was yeah. I thought she was going to have 100 points in the first quarter. I'm so like, did I. Holy moly. <laughs> she didn't even cover. Ain't that a salute to DraftKings? Uh, Rose is in the other room. And before we go to Lucy, because this is not a put on. Lucy, I don't, I, I'm going to say that there is no one in the state of Florida hurting more for the last three days because of something that happened in sports than Lucy because she cares more about this team than anyone in this state, I would say, than any human being in this state. In the, the Mar- world. The Marlins are 1-11. Billy's a Marlin fan. I mean, That's hurting a lot. <laughs> you know. You don't know pain. Rose, uh, you were with Lucy on content I'm assuming I'm going to see today at some point, Lucy, or no? Yeah, the video's done, I believe. Okay, uh, good good work. <laughs> uh, Rose, what happened? Explain to me what happened on Sunday with Lucy. You were with her. How crazy is she? Oh, well, um, she's crazy, but um, that's why we like each other. Uh, but we were at the game, and then the first half was amazing. Then we got to the point where Iowa, I don't know what happened, and she was like, oh, you know what, Rose? Uh, love, uh, God loves you very much. Can you pray? And I'm like, Okay, yeah, I, I was already praying, but I was praying inside of me, like, I was, okay, God, help us here. Private but, prayer. You weren't forced into some sort of public sharing prayer. You were already doing the prayer, and now she's just, re- she didn't know that, and she's requesting more prayer. Yeah, so uh, she got me my, to get my rosary out, so I, I got it out, I was, okay, okay, I'm going to pray. And she was like, pray, okay, I'm praying, I'm, I, I promise I'm praying. Uh, but the thing is, I, I don't think I phrased it uh, well, because I was like, God may... Your will be done. I didn't pray, hey, no. help Iowa. Hey. No, no, you didn't. That's no. how you do it. You can't pray that. No, that's yeah. no. That's just no. Terrible, terrible job of praying. No, you that's can't strong arm God. Pray. How dare you pray like that? That's how you pray. It is his will, though. But yeah. Oh, Ro- Rose. Jesus. What can I say? No. Well, learn how to pray. No, but I mean, you, you God had the Gamecocks. Right. You messed it all up. I know. But it was also my dad's fault because he started uh, watching the game, and every time he watched a the game, they lose. So he was like, oh, I'm watching the game. I'm like, no, please. <laughs> and he had to put it out. So I was like, okay, I'm going to pray. All right, Rose, I'm, I'm sorry, but penalty box. You prayed wrong. <laughs> what? Uh, yes, penalty box. Get out of here. Lucy, no, you got to uh, – yeah, your will? She, that's the appropriate that's prayer, how you do Dan. It. It's supposed to be God's Lucy, will. Lucy, that's not what Lucy Tony was Tony met at. God in the forest. He, he told me know. it's my will, yeah, not yours. And exactly. I said, okay, fine. That's yeah. not what Lucy was asking for. Two minutes for praying. Lucy, you did not <laughs> – I didn't know that. Lucy, that's unbelievable that you asked for prayer wrong. I didn't ask for it wrong. You didn't want – God's will be done. You wanted your will be done. Exactly. <laughs> you get it. Thank you. What would that? <laughs> but did you hear Don Staley? She has a great relationship there with the Lord, go. so his will oh, was yeah. done. God damn it. <laughs> Whoa. No. No. Not, no. Huh. You can't put a GD you, you in. Can't G- use it. Use a GOT. I'm from the hood. We say yeah, GOT. GOT. I, yeah, I yeah. apologize. Got you. I, I, I was accountability. Go sit with Rose. Sit, go sit with me. Rose. Two minutes for blasphemy. He went from being right about everything right. to two uh, minutes in the box. Get out of here. GD wow. with God's will yeah, you doesn't can't work. Do that. Yeah. No, that's blasphemous. Yeah. Yeah. Blasphemous. Yeah. We won't tolerate blasphemy around here. Thank you. <laughs> Argue that we may have just committed it just before this. That's what the joke I was making was. Thank you for showing people behind the curtain. It can't get much worse for me, so whatever. That's what I was doing. Look at Smile. That's, that, yeah, that's the, the joke, executive producer. Stay with me. That's what I was doing. We just spent that time blaspheming. We yelled. Hey, remember how mad we got when it said she prayed wrong? And then Gigi used the Lord's name. You go sit with them. You oh. go sit with them. No, he's he's too not. It's a crowded box. Lucy, take me through your emotions, please. Like right now? Bad? Really bad? Mm. Not great? Been it's, doing better. It's been a couple days though, Lou. So it feels like you know things have you three, three days for removed. Right. So no, she came in here despondent. She, I was sad. This I is am as bad. Sad. This was as sad as I've seen her look coming into work. All time sad level. So Sunday, I went into that game thinking South Carolina would win. I really did. And then the first quarter happened, and I was like, shit. Iowa might win this thing, and I got a little taste of it. You know, I got a little like glimpse in the future. And then it was all taken away from me. And I said, okay, I'm really sad. This is tough. Whatever. I'm grateful. We fly back the next morning. 
I rot the whole day. I just lay in bed. It was awesome. It kicked ass. And I opened up TikTok, and my entire TikTok are all these edits of the Iowa team and with all the sad music that made me cry. And I was like, oh, my God, I got to stay off my phone. I stay off my phone. Then finally today or yesterday, I'm back on my phone. You know what? I cleaned. I was I was looking up. And then the University of Iowa posted a video of all these, like, young kids cheering for Caitlin with the song from the Barbie movie, and that made me cry so bad. So it's just, like, up and down and up and down, and I don't know if I'll ever be happy again. Again. You, you know, guys didn't feel it like that. You guys did not experience any of this the way that she did. Crushed. You were really in bed for an entirety of a day. This was, this was a thunderstorm of darkness that swept over you. Yes, because I have now seen my my favorite team lose in the national championship twice in a row, and I've been there both times. And the last time hurt because you lost to Kim Mulkey, and that really sucks. Like, at least this time it was to Don Saley, somebody that everybody loves, that I love. That's there is phenomenal. comfort in that. There's small, yeah. small solace, and I don't also have to lose to this person I don't like and don't respect. It made me so, like, obviously I wish I would have seen Iowa on the podium, but when I saw Don Saley dancing with the trophy, I was like, damn, I'm happy for her. I really, really am. But then it hits you that everybody Everybody's gone, and it's over. And instead of just, wow, what a great season it was, congratulations to South Carolina, the whole discourse online was, is Caitlin the go? Hear all what these former players are saying, blah, blah, blah. I just want a moment of peace. One moment of peace. I have to commend Lucy because, Dan, I saw something that put a little flint rock to my heart, and it's somebody caring about something in a way that I haven't cared about something in so long. Like, that... That like you haven't been around muscle. sports long enough to already be hardened. D- here. Damn, like, but like what? What in the world point. could get me? Could get how, me to that? How point, are you though? a sports cynic? Not like, just what? in sports, he's saying. Just in life. No, no, not in life. Thank in you, sports. Tony. In sports. Oh, okay. But what? it's like I see Lucy caring so much about a particular team that I feel like I haven't had that in like fifteen years. Okay, you, uh, you, I think have lost part of your soul because I believe that Heat fans live where Lucy is. Panther fans right now are living uh, living where Lucy lives. You and guys don't get it. That's not the same. That's not the same, Dan. I lost back-to-back national championship <laughs> games in college athletics where it's so much tougher to win. It's so tough, especially at a school like Iowa. We don't have as much money as everyone else. We don't have as much talent as everybody else. This was a once-in-a-lifetime run. Do not compare the two. Your pain is greater than anyone's. Yes! <laughs> Be nice to me! Okay. I need it! All right. She is complaining. Uh, I, I am worried in general about... I'm not complaining. I'm hurting. <laughs> you're, okay, but you're hurting and complaining about that hurt by lashing out at Meadowlark. At you. <laughs> I mean, you are Meadowlark, so same thing. But lashing out... Yeah, okay, fine. Lashing out at me as we send you to what could have been the day and night of your dreams. Like what but it metal wasn't. you're mad yeah, but you're mad at me. You're wasn't. lashing out at me, even though our company paid for you to be at what would have been the greatest sporting memory of your lifetime, never to be outdone. Yeah, well, it didn't turn out that way, and it would have been awesome because I had this fun plan. If I would won, I was gonna shoot off confetti cannons in the office. It was gonna be awesome. And so yeah. I'm going to give myself two weeks to be sad. I'm going to be sad for two weeks. And then in 15 days, I will be so grateful because before the game started, obviously I cried multiple times. There was a moment where we were walking through the crowd and I was like, wow, how awesome is this? What a special moment that I get to be here and watch my alma mater play and do it for work and all this awesome stuff. And then Iowa lost and all the good feelings were gone. Yeah. That's how all it goes. The, all the good feelings are still here. I, I definitely feel I don't my sister, them. and it, it just it's, it sucks. But you made it to the championship in back-to-back back years, you know what I mean? As a Buffalo Bills fan, I feel your pain, ma'am. But I think that the WNBA and the women's college game right now, it's – it's, it literally brought tears to my eyes seeing how much love and how much hate that it was receiving because back in the days, nobody cared. You go to online, back to the kitchen, get in the kitchen. Oh, this is terrible. But we're actually arguing over Diana Taurasi, Caitlin Clark, Maya Moore. This is beautiful. I'm so happy to live in this era of women's sports. And you are always, when you come around here, you're somebody who brings positivity, but Stugatz doesn't want that. He wants to do top five people in sports who connote prayer. Are you ready? <laughs> That's a good one. Number five. God, sham God. 
Hey, respect. Know, respect. My brother put out one. By the way, a little high on the list. Really? Good, good timing, high. Billy. Welcome back. Number four. Cantavius Caldwell Pope. KCP. Thank you. Number three. Malik Monk. The Muckinator. Number two. Kendrick Nunn. That's a good list. It's a good list. I can't believe he got it this quickly. Number one. Priest Holmes. I mean, it's a good list. Nailed it. He really did. Thank you. Left out Garrett Temple. Ooh. O-L-I. Good one. <laughs> no Christian Ponder. And Neil O'Donnell. That's another good one. Thank you. It's a good list. Uh, Rick Upchurch. You, uh, you, you're you going to be able to keep going, I think. Uh, Juju and Tony, I have also missed you because on Monday, talking to a room that did not want to talk about... Mike Francesa. The Pope. <laughs> Thank you. A room that did not want to talk about J. Cole and Drake and Kendrick. I, met, I was looking for both of you on Monday, and I, I felt uh, broken because... A lot of people in hip hop just simply wanted beef to be beef. I was actually most curious about Juju's opinion here because I know that he uh, promotes positivity. And I thought there was great strength in what J. Cole did, but I am in the minority in thinking that because hip hop beef, everyone wanted it, and you want it between the three best in the game. Like to, for the three most popular guys to go at it, everybody wants that as entertainment. But the floor is yours because nobody here wanted to talk about it on Monday. So. The mental health ascension of me, that side of me is so proud of my brother, Jermaine Cole. Oh my God, round of applause for him having strength and not giving a damn about what a hater got to say about his beefs or his friendships or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the hip hop in me really was let down by that. Mm -hmm. Just not because of I don't think we're going to see some shootouts between J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar. I don't think he has to worry about that side of the pressure that usually comes with Kendrick Lamar and that side of the world. I think that he could have kept it hip-hop, find a way to keep it hip-hop, because I grew up on DMX. I grew up on Mob Deep. I grew up on Jay-Z. I grew up on Tupac and Biggie. It's not to rob us of that. And then to have that stance, I feel like I was let down as a hip-hop fan. Drew, the other thing, too, is rap hip hop is very uh wrestling in a sense right where you you and me could both be rappers both have beef but behind closed doors we're boys exactly. it's just the music industry is pitting us together to elevate what the streaming numbers are with the the concerts the tours and all that stuff i felt like there was a way that j cole could have continued to play this out as yeah we have beef drake's gonna drop something it elevates everybody's right. music at the same time Behind closed doors, yo, me and you are boys. We're just doing this because, hey, this is the job. We just got to do it at, the, at, at this point. Right, put it on wax. You know how many battle rappers step into that square every day and just say the worst thing about this brother, but after it's all said and done, you already know this is a sport. If you call yourself a, a, a one of the goats and the legends in this sport, the, the top three or whatever you call yourself, you can't shy down from a challenge. And I feel like if you are a rapper, rapping shouldn't be looked at as something such a tall task or something you feel so ashamed of because brother you went to the studio you laid the verse down you listened back you got it mixed and mastered you sent the artwork off right. you sent it into the streaming distributors right. and you at it's so many stages that you could have said ah, i don't want to do this bro you done put it out for the world to hear and you come back with that i the hip-hop side of me is let down and the other thing too is the the this happened on Me metro and futures album right. so he had a week to put that diss track together, put it on on Might Delete Later, which is his new EP that came out. But now you're saying you want to drop it? Project too, it is. By the way. It was. Great it was project. really good. Young, he got Gucci Man and Young. He got Dro. Young Dro on oh, it. My goodness. He got Cameron on it. <laughs> you feel me? Come on, bro. Great project. But don't nobody want to hear that, bro. We not we not all in butterfly land. Like salute to Dreamville. But bro, most of us out here wake up with it on their mind every day. Most of us out here really go get it for real, for real. So. I was let down as a hip hop head. I think I think Drake too is going to come up because he had put some cryptic stuff on social media too. It feels to me like Drake is getting all of the ghostwriters together to be like, all right, how can we do this in reverse now to to make my diss track the best out of all three of them? So it's going to be interesting to see because it elevates all the music, Dan. I grew up on Ether. I grew up on Hit 'Em Up. I grew up on all that. And them folks is uh, adult males right now, 40, 50 years old, dapping each other off when they see each other. Come on, man, keep it hip hop.
You say this, but the place I want to challenge you on is, in general, who you are away from hip-hop. The person that I know who knows how these streets can be and what J. Cole is saying when he says, hey, my friends want blood. My friends are saying, no, elevate this. Do what Juju and Tony wants. And he's saying to his friends, no, my spiritual path, this doesn't feel right to me. Doing it, man, you cannot accuse J. Cole, Juju, of being somebody who does it the way everyone else has done it. In this instance, he's separating himself, not just from these two, but from all of hip-hop by saying, no, I'd like to elevate this. My friends are telling me, go for the bloodbath because we believe in your talent. We don't think you're going to lose. You're the best there's ever been. Show them. But you know, you're saying you don't think that this is what happens around these guys because they do not have the temperament. They don't have the reputation of being killers away from here. But when his friends are asking for blood, what do you make of him being a leader and saying, because I liked what I saw. I, I love hip hop. I'm not from a different time, but from the beginnings of it. And so when I'm seeing J. Cole saying, no, I'm not going to do this the way everyone expects me to do it. I'm like, that's keeping totally in line with what this man's career has been. Right. It's, it's, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm sorry. It was a thousand Choked up. You feel me? Yeah. But Not that much. Sometimes when you're a leader, sometimes you lose a battle. And this is a battle you lost, brother. I don't give a damn how mature. Look, we're not talking about you as a man. Well, we are talking about him as a man, bringing that part into it. I understand that part, but you call yourself a GOAT. You call yourself top five, dead or alive. You call yourself these things. And I feel like every now and then, some of these people who don't do it like the other people, we take missteps. And we sometimes take an L. And this is an L for my boy, J. Cole. Evander Holyfield.
Stugatz, I think that there have been a couple of things happening around here with David Sampson recently that I have found interesting as someone who's interested in the sociology of our place. Mm -hmm. David Sampson is doing something brave and um, ambitious. He has had a show for a very short period of time, and he's already touring with it. Crazy. And and, yes. and on Monday, he, he was with Juju in Atlanta. Juju, how did that go? It went amazing. My brother David had control of the crowd, man. He funny as hell, bro. Y'all got to see my boy in person, man. Like, I don't know what opinion y'all have of him from this show, but seeing him live with his friend Dan Ugly, man, and the fans, bro, it, was, it just feel real good Uggs. to see him out there like that. Oh, wow. uh, brave and ambitious. Uh, this is something that uh, David Sampson is trying that I would not dare to try. I do worry about burnout with David Sampson because, listen, usually when I call David, he either picks up or he calls me right back. But after he did the Rich Eisen show, uh, show something happened something happened I called David he had a bad connection he said he called me back he didn't call me back I called him back when I called him back he had to call me back because he was going on a local radio station in Sacramento I mean it's unbelievable Dan he is gonna burn out I am telling he you right now he was on in Naples uh, that's what it looks like mm. Stugatz hunger yeah. You used to feel it many, many years ago. I used ago. to do those hits all yeah, the yes, time, man. 20, now I'm doing different hits. Y yes, I mean. uh, that is what you're doing. Yeah. You're fried from the drugs. David, how has it I'm gone? Fried, uh... I'm just wondering whether or not, Stu, when you were calling, was it for anything other than for me to help you write your book? Uh, no. No. That's okay, what, yeah. so <laughs> there you go. I was checking in with you on the tour just to see how it's going. I'm proud of you. I'm told the shows are very, very good. So I just wanted to see how you were doing. That's all. Thank you. That's very nice. Yes. It's been fascinating. Being with Juju in Atlanta was actually the highlight so far. I'm sitting in Boston right now, and I wish that Juju were there because the feedback I've gotten in the episode hasn't even been released. Juju, it's going to be released this weekend, so everyone can will watch and listen to what we talked about. But you are a fascinating, and Dan, your name may have come up, and, and the esteem in which we hold you, but the understanding that we all want to be better for you and what we do. And having Juju there talk about it and having an audience and a, a far bigger audience than just who was in that room listen to the show, you'll get to see Juju in a way that I wish that I wish that everyone could look at Juju the way I and everyone can look at him who's part of the Nothing Personal family. Thank you so much, brother. I really appreciate that, man. It means the world to me. All right. So I want to explore something here, though, David, because this very nice thing between you two, I will tell you that one of the problems that we now have around here is that because you have a tour, you're doing something. Sarah Spain did this. Greg Cody. All of them made their podcasts into something that was elevated when they took the personalities in our universe and used them in different positions. I don't think Stugatz is happy for your success. <laughs> I don't think that he likes, because this is Stugatz's move too. He uses all of these people to, for example, write a book that he's not going to write for himself because he takes access to this world and then he profits off it. I mean, I don't I know. actually have the feeling that my success is actually despite and in spite of the position I have at Metal Arc <laughs> because <laughs> I have to fight the, the character that I am and that you make me to be on your show as this person that everyone hates. He ruined baseball for Billy and Mike, and he's just this That's ogre. True. And then people listen to nothing personal, and they, they see me live, and they realize I'm actually – can be funny, engaging, and talk about things that you guys won't talk about. And I send you a list of things I want to talk about, and I spend time putting a show together for this day with you, and we never get to any of it. Hmm. Brother, I know how we can get to some of that stuff. Three words, me, you, movie podcast. You feel me? We just review movies. And no we one's talk doing about it. Getting, yeah. we, we, we compete. We call it a bigger and better cinephile with David Sampson and wow. Juju Gotti. Check it, Dan. I think that's a good idea, David. What do you think? Why wouldn't you profit on the way that this organization underutilizes Juju? Well, it's funny that you do that. Uh, and the answer is I would love to do something with Juju, but I can't get Bimmel to return a call. So I'm not exactly positive how that would ever get approved. Join the but list. But that said, not Juju, alone. if you... <laughs> All right, Samson, I just approved it. You and you and Juju can do a movie podcast. You can't. I, oh, I just approved is, it. I just approved you, it. it. Nope.
not acceptable because you approve things without with reckless indifference toward budget, toward what it actually I, means. I just approved it. It's approved. Sounds approved to me. <laughs> it's, it's approved. I, you can do this dance if you like, but I want a movie pod. I've wanted you and Adnan to do a movie podcast forever, and you just figured out at the very end of a couple of months ago, you figure out, hey, we might be good if we work together seven straight hours. I've been wanting you to work on movies in a way that reaches young people, and you and Adnan are out here talking all the time about Coppola. No, that's Adnan. Who? Let's not be confused. <laughs> <laughs> No, the great Francis no, Ford. Yes, I of mean. course, the great Francis Ford. Yes, there, you guys are out here talking about movies, and the audience is, can we get Gene Hackman? Oh, if Gina. you can watch Nothing Personal, Dan, which I know that you do every single day, I review a current movie every day and spend time on it. And Juju and I could do a show where we only talk about current movies and I think it'd be outstanding, but it would just require some level of support from Metalark. And I want them to focus on supporting you and your here, show. Let's do and this. Then here, get to other here shows. David, you want pressure? You want challenges? You want adversity? You want the degree of difficulty? He just wants a callback. Okay. In 10 minutes, you and Juju will debut the pilot episode of Samson and Juju at the movies. We're going to debut that live in 10 minutes at the Are end. Are we locked in on that name? Yes. No, the name you can no. change. Right. But we're yeah. locked in on the support of the idea that we must put Juju and Samson in better positions because they're hustling. Like what they just did in Atlanta. I want to celebrate the fact David Samson is on tour. A couple of Jews cutting it up. Hey, well, I am. That, now that's the name of the show. <laughs> there you go. That, there it is. That is a great yes. name for the show. 80 20 my way. <laughs> it is a, it's a great name for the show. You know what? If you want Stu Gatz to host it, we will debut the pilot episode of Opportunity. A couple of Jews cutting it up in, in five minutes. We're going to do that right now. Are you guys ready? I'm ready to go. Juju, off the record and off the air, have you seen Bob Marley's new movie called One Love? I have not seen that movie. No. Not at all. Mm. But all right. Not start. working so yeah, far. Bad start. Bad start. So far, yeah. that's Gonna a need a planning here. meeting. Yeah. Gonna need a planning 80, meeting. 80 20 20. Stu Gotts, you can have 5% for the name, but you don't get a trailer. Right. It's the initial 5% of revenue from the first 30 days. Five minutes from now, we will do it. Samson, the Marlins, do they have a lame duck manager again? Like, what is this that just happened yesterday? This is something that I've not seen in my entire career. When Skip Schumacher was hired in Florida by Kim Ang, he was given a two-year deal plus an option, and it's a team option. And the reason teams want that option is if the manager works out, they want the ability to have his salary locked in for that third year. If it doesn't work out, you can jettison him after two and have no more financial responsibility. It turns out that this offseason – Skip Schumacher was so disappointed with the direction of the team, so disappointed with the fact that Kim Ang was disappeared, that he actually expressed a desire to not be here long term. And so the Marlins said, all right, we will get rid of your option because maybe the new president of baseball operations, Billy's favorite guy, Peter, did not want him either. The problem is this word leaked out. What does it mean? It means that Schumacher's gone after the season without a doubt. And the fact that the Marlins are going to lose 90 to 95 games will make it easy for him to move on and for the Marlins to move on because new presidents want their own people in his managers. Skip may get another job. I'm not sure he was long for the Marlins job to begin with, but I don't think it's a reflection of the way I ran it where we fired a manager every single year. I think this is a reflection of bringing in someone and wanting to start over and I think you should all look for, and I have a way to see on this on Nothing Personal, that Gabe Kapler is likely to be your next manager. And he is in the organization already. And I think you all ought to be careful what you wish for. But I think the Marlins are trying something different. They're trying to be the Rays. They're trying to be analytical. They're building up their front office. The problem is that to be the Rays... I always tried to be the Rays. You have to be as smart as the Rays, and I'm just not sure the Marlins have the people in place to do that. What happened with that comment that you just made? Careful what you wish for on Gabe Kapler. Well, I think that you have to look at his history as a manager, and you have to realize that he is the type of manager 
that is going to be difficult. He can be difficult for the players to be difficult for the front office and managerial careers this day and age are about managing up to the front office who's completely involved and managing down to the clubhouse because the clubhouse doesn't like the front office, doesn't like the ownership. And you've got to have someone in the middle who can deal with both. And the reason why you've seen Gabe Kapler move on is super hard to do it. Don Mattingly was terrific at it until he lost the clubhouse and the, the whole issue with Jazz and with Miguel Rojas. And that was the end of Mattingly. So it's very difficult line to walk. And it's going to be difficult for Gabe as well, especially with the players the Marlins have in the front office they now have. All right. When Skip Schumacher was in here, you guys objectified him. You guys were all, like, sniffing around and saying, what's your workout? What do you eat? Have you guys seen Gabe Kapler shirtless? Oh, Oh beefcake. Gabe Kapler is an Adonis. Gabe Kapler is coming in here with his data and his – his raised buddy, and he is going to pectoral to death the Marlins that is clubhouse. Not natural. <laughs> uh, whoa! Want, I'm not defaming whoa. anyone. Whoa! Who has a body? Wait that a minute. Looks like what are you? That? Wait Tim a minute. Knows. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait a minute. Hold on. Time to throw away all journalistic credibility and get reckless. It's Here not is something journalism. we like to call reckless speculation. You're good. You can't Can you put the picture of the former mayor of no, Miami on there? No, here Carlos is it, here, Alvarez. No, yeah, no, yeah, we'll get that in a moment for you, asshole. <laughs> Weird. Let's question. put. Yeah, yeah, we'll just we'll run and get that real quick, or we'll do the show we were doing ourselves about Gabe Kapler shirtless. Let's put this beefcake up here so that just Samson can drink this in. This is why he tours. I mean. Yeah, this is why he's the great David Samson. Hey, video guys, can you do something we're totally ill prepared for? I do it alone. Uh-huh. Juju, how many people were in my group in Atlanta? Uh, about good, about what, 35, 40 people? You feel no, like? no, no, I'm talking about travel with me. Oh. Who oh, goes with me? Can we get the brother with the bikini drawers off the screen? Can we can we do that and have this conversation? <laughs> no, I think he looks great. Oh, no, he looks Wait, great. That, yeah, was, that great. was the crowd, Zero. thirty-five to forty people. He, he looks. That was uh, that was success. Oh, I mean. come on, Dan. <laughs> does anyone really look like that from doing sit-ups? Yes. <laughs> I've never met anyone.
Are you guys all ready? Is everyone ready for the new pilot of the new show that is sweeping the nation? There are not enough movie podcasts out there. <laughs> uh, David Sampson reviews a movie every day on Nothing Personal. Uh, Cinephile with Adnan Verk. Uh, he also has a movie podcast and Cinephobe with Amin. So, Juju, are you ready to get into the space with David Sampson? Is there been any planning here that would allow me to toss it as the host of this situation into a game show? We, uh, we have some images. We have a background that I think can be placed up, or maybe it's just on TV. I don't know. And then we have some music. You want to hear the music? All oh, right. There I, it is. The official I don't, logo. No. Do, I the, wanna, uh, do I want to hear some music? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the best podcast in the entire freaking world. And introducing the man himself, David Sampson, the B in the mental. Welcome to A Few Jews Cutting It Up, episode number one. Yes, that's Jew, as in J-U, Juju Gotti. I'm David Sampson, the J-E-W part of the two Jews. We'll be with you once a week, depending on the financing from Metal Arc Media, and we will be reviewing movies, talking movies that you've seen, that you care about, not the ones that I saw in my childhood, the ones that the one Jew you're looking at has seen currently, and we're here to start talking about poor things. What's wrong, Dan? Cut. Four, uh, eight, sixty-nine. Yeah, I, I, I'm, ju I'm just a little. I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared. But let's go. Let's uh, let's review. I, it, it seems... Dan, you're going like this. Your head is in your hands. We can't what? worry about the haters right now, David. Right now, it's, what's important sponsored by is them. Emma Stone. Oh my goodness gracious, she deserved that Oscar. I was one of the guys who was like, hey. You know what I mean? Old girl from uh, uh, the Scorsese movie uh, with Lee Lily Gladstone. Lily Ga See, this is why we're a great team. Lily Gladstone. <laughs> I was thinking that like, Lily Gladstone might should have got it. But then I took my ass to the uh, what, Hulu, salute to Hulu, and watched Poor Things. And ma'am and sirs, she did her thing in that film. And it was beautifully shot. Oh, my God. Sets amazing, David. Were you shocked at the amount of nudity in that movie? Oh, yes, I was. But pleased. <laughs> now, it's not allegedly, there was actually that level, Emma Stone as an Oscar award winner doing a movie that some criticized her as being way too sexual, and especially that scene with Mark Ruffalo. That was scary, except it made me feel good because he looks like I do. Scary? <laughs> The Hulk. I mean, he did a great job in that film. He's so believable as an asshole. Oh, my God. I believe it. I think he is one in real life. I think that the it was beautifully written, beautifully shot. I think that deserved all the flowers it got at the Academy Awards. Now we're going to get somewhere because Mark Ruffalo obviously has very significant political opinions that we don't necessarily need to discuss here. I except to anybody. To say. I don't know anything. I didn't talk to anyone, Dave. Juju, one of the things that we're going to do for our audience is we're going to give them our opinions of the movies and of the people who make them. And we're going to make sure we don't focus only on Martin Scorsese the way Adnan does. We're going to talk about the way people make movies, how movies get made, the money, and then the product. So we have poor things that we started with. And for our audience, we're going to watch movies every day and come to you with a different review so that you know what to watch. Because if one Jew likes it and the other Jew likes it, that means no matter what, you're going to like it. And you're going to talk about the business of movies on this podcast. I feel like you've already lost Lucy. Uh, Lucy's already despondent. She's come to work in a way that's not feeling good. She's hurting you. You're not making her any happier. She, I have no proof she's even listening to you guys anymore. I've you're, been doodling. You're doodling. Okay, she's doodling. It's making well, me feel actually, better. Look, man, you keep focusing on the haters right now. We are, it's look, amazing. screw Adnan Burke and Cinephile. We are, we are here to stay, baby. So, yes, sir, David, back to you. <laughs> Juju, we're not going to have any hate on this podcast because you get enough of it with Dan's show. And you get enough of people ignoring and having the wrong view of both your Jew and my Jew. Forget it. We're about love. We're about people who actually care about what they're talking about. No hate. If people want to doodle, turn the channel. We're going to build a big enough audience that we'll be okay. 
David, I'm going through something right now. Yeah. Cut me some slack. Lucy, what is the statute of limitations when your team loses? How long can you stay angry and upset? Uh, I'm giving myself two weeks. Yeah. I gave myself oh my one God. year. I, think that's I gave totally myself reasonable. one week last year, and now this back to back national yeah. championship games. So I get two weeks. So please don't be mean to me right now. It's illegal. Uh, David, I'm producing this. Weeks to- I'm producing this thing on the fly. You have to rate movies doing it this way. Five stars of David. Okay. Five stars of David. Wow. So good. Oh, so good. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> he, 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 look, just give him an executive. EP. Cut. If you give, give him an EP cut, he will absolutely help this. This project needs the power, strength, and voice of a of a Stugatz to to make the bro, the, the business profitable. Right? You need his help. Let's go. You got. And the best thing, Stu, is that you can do this from anywhere in the country. Oh. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Don't open that door. Trust me. Don't open no, that door, open. David. Uh, I'm running through it. Stu, <laughs> all you need is a Wi Fi connection. Give us one hour of your time a week, and we will do this uh, cutting it up with two Jews rating <laughs> movies with stars of David. Stugatz. I would be very careful, Stugatz, of getting into business with this man because he's on tour right now and uh, he knows how to. If you think you not writing a book that you're publishing is going to make money, give this man an opening to some of these opportunities. If you hosted this particular show, there's, yes. there's a business opportunity here for Is you. Is there a paycheck, though? I yeah, mean. well, you got to be careful negotiating <laughs> with, with Samson. You're, Stu, it, I'm going to give you the terms of the deal right now. All right. I'm going to give you both a piece of the show yes. and a weekly fee to guarantee that you show up. Hmm. How much, though? I mean... We're going to give... I will give you whatever... I'm Actually, I can tell you exactly. Name my price? Wow. Given this, No, given the sponsors, I'll give you 2 k an hour. Plus five percent of the ownership of the show. Wait, hold up a second. I, I think I can do this. I'd like to be part of this show. I can do this. I love. I'm in on the two K an hour. Wait, Lucy. Hold on, sharks. Yeah. No, 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 Samson. Samson, you will be able. Five percent, Stugatz. Samson, if you want to, you can have your choice of the group. Actually, if you want Stugatz to do it, but I'm sure the others. Now that you've named your price, I'm sure all the others. I'll take the deal, David. That you'd want would take the deal as well. I'll do fifteen hundred an hour, and I am also Jewish, so we've got no. We it's two Jews, not three. Mm-hmm. The name of the show is just but like the Hee Haw Three. all Jews are welcome. Yeah, all Jews That's are welcome. We can't just, be means put that out there. excluding the Jews. I mean, come <laughs> wow. on, David. All Jews are welcome to listen and sponsor, but the microphone, we don't hand out microphones the way Levitard does. We are very careful with our microphones. Got We've got Stu, Juju, and David. Those are the microphones. That's it. So we've got a deal? It's closed. So we've got a deal. The deal has been struck. Two grand for every week that you do it. Right. Plus, you understand. No, but you have to do it. You understand what Samson's doing. This tour he's doing has nothing to do with Metal Lark. Samson is a hustler. Samson is put on a tour. I get it. He, are you in Boston? He's gone rogue. You're in Boston tonight because someone else is paying for the tour because he can get yes. these people to pay. These for, are the things now, you have to do when Bimmel doesn't return a call. Now you I, just go on your own. Now, I mean. now imagine the three of you touring the country, re- reviewing movies. <laughs> Juju, the Beatles. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> and I've got a better one for you, Stu. Juju and I are happy to do it in Chicago. We're happy to do it according to the Northwestern schedule. Love it. We are very flexible about where we will record the show, but I need your complete attention and buy-in to this hour of content that we'll do per week. You got it. Just so I'm clear, 2000 an hour, correct? And I'm getting 80% of the show. You're getting five. Juju is getting 15. Is that the deal? That's almost the deal, but oh. not exactly. Hmm. And I will I will give this to you in writing so you can show it to your agents and lawyers. No, and I good. will demand a response I trust quickly. You. <laughs> no, you <laughs> I'm the only one. <laughs> and that was two Jews cutting it up, it up with Woo! David Samson the preview. We're going to just show a little thought. We can't give you the whole thing right now. But next time, we're going to have it all the way together, Daddy. Salute to everybody. I am else. I am fine with making that an hour that exists on the show next week because you guys have figured out how to do this correctly. You well, just... No, they've figured out an hour not doing it on the show. So they can yeah, it's going to be their own it. podcast. Yeah, you're not, you've, yeah. you've lost this leverage. You. It's not yours Samson anymore. will sell it back to the company because he can get it sponsored. Samson will just go out there and get it sponsored the way that he got his tour sponsored. That's in Boston tonight. Where do people get more information, David? You can go to citywinery.com. You can buy tickets. We're going to be in New York on the 29th. 
We still have Nashville and Pittsburgh to go. Tonight, I'm focused on Boston, and each show is pretty specific to the city in which I'm in. So I'm going to be talking about the Red Sox today. I'm going to be talking about the Bruins, the Patriots. We're going to talk about Dynasty, the documentary. And then we do do topics of the day outside of the city. It's a pretty good show in that we also have the Boston Marathon race director as a guest tonight. And the Boston Marathon is coming up this Monday, Patriots Day. So people are enjoying it. They're loving the episodes when they're released. They're loyal. We're building. It's like the training wheels tour. We're starting something and you have to start somewhere, Dan. You can't just talk about doing things. You actually have to do them. Can you give me a business explanation for what it means that Last Dive Bar has filed for trademark of the Las Vegas A's? This is a big story. In baseball, when you're going to move, like when we went from Florida Marlins to Miami Marlins, there's an entire legal process you go through before making the announcement. And it turns out that the A's never secured the name Las Vegas Athletics. And so the Last Dive Bar said, we're going to apply to the trademark office. It's a federal (laughs) application process, and they're trying to get control of Las Vegas athletics. But then it was announced that Major League Baseball actually filed in Mauritius, and which is absurd, but as part of the Paris Convention, it could count toward a U.S. filing. There's going to be an amazing fight, and it's going to take quite a while to solve itself. And the last dive bar is this organization that was started in order to bring attention to the Oakland A's ownership and the nightmare that it is. And they're pretty good at what they do, drawing attention to it, though, of course, the A's are pretty good at drawing attention to themselves. And it just looks like another misstep by baseball and by John Fisher, the owner of the Oakland A's. It's just downright embarrassing, way more so than Marlins Park not being full, way more so than than any other team right now. It's one of the biggest issues facing baseball. Nothing Personal is the name of his podcast. Uh, He is very aggressively climbing up the sports media ladder. I don't have time to talk to you about the Rich Eisen experience. Thank you, David. We will talk to you again soon. And again, if you want tour information, David Sampson, improbably, impossibly, David Sampson is on tour, and that information is on your screen. He might be coming to a city near you.